so welcome guys uh, to this session number four of operations management and uh, under this session we will be discussing you know service design uh, service blueprinting uh, one of the very interesting area of uh, operations management so let me start with this very quote by stephen mortis service design practical six to one evolving field service design according to him service design helps to innovate or improve services to make them more useful, usable, desirable for clients, and efficient as well as effective for organizations. It is a new holistic, multidisciplinary, integrative field. As we discussed in the last session that services are uh, different kind of a products. They have unique features and those features put challenges on, you know, the service market is because services can't be touched, services can't be seen, it can't be stored. It, it can't be assessed or evaluated so you know that we we, we uh, discussed that services are processes services are uh, you know something that need to be produced consumed and delivered at the same time simultaneously separation is not possible in majority of service cases so they, there are some functions of services that are performed from state so few uh, you know key key personnels are uh, there in a service a services and those are responsible for you know it in interacting with the customer and those were the uh, you know key points key touch points for a customer and there are some processes that happens backstage so to design entire service process or entire service we need to understand what is that which is front stage and what all the functions which are backstage so uh, this this helps in designing a service it helps in understanding a service and uh, documenting the service process so before that let's under, uh, let, let's understand the gap model for service quality there are five gaps and there are uh, some gaps are consu consumer oriented gaps and few gaps are uh, you know company oriented gap or the uh, the service provider oriented gaps so let me start with gap number 1 uh, let me use my pen gap number one is known as knowledge gap and this knowledge gap happens when there is a gap between what customer expected and what management perceives about the customer's expectation so you know that marketers do conduct you know surveys research market research to understand to know to go insight into the customer expectation and whatever way in whatever way because customer also do not uh, you know uh, make their expectations very clear to the marketers they may uh, you know uh, not they do not specify so many times there may be some some misunderstanding there may be some uh, you know uh, 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 some uh, in some other way, uh, company or the, the management is perceiving these expectations, right? So this is a gap number uh, one and a knowledge gap when there is a gap uh, when what customer expects and what management understood those expectations as. Then there arises a gap number two, a gap between what the management perceives about consumer expectations and what specification about quality that is being given to the design department. So let, let, let's say that if, if customer express, like for example, if, um, if it's a crutch service, you know, daycare service, a working parents looking for their uh, small kid to, to you know, uh, live in a safe custody for say from nine to evening five. So the customer expect to have their kid in a, in a safe custody. So safety is one concern, let's say. And management perception of this these uh, customer expectation safety in terms of the 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 uh, you know the, the safety of a kids from nine to eleven and that is when the the child is being ha handed over again to the parents he, he need to be safe enough but uh, you know uh, and this this understanding of a customer perception by the management is need to be specified and expressed to the service department. So if there is a gap, there is, there is, you know, a, a misunderstanding or the way management perceive the customer expectation and how it, the other specification is given to the service quality department. If it, if it is different, there would be a gap too. And this gap is known as standard standards gap. Then arise the gap number three, which is also called as delivery gap. And this gap happens between the service delivery and the service de design or service quality specification so the way service design department understood or the way it is designed uh, 
and the people who deliver the service if there is a gap between these two there could be the delivery gap then comes the gap number 4 means this gap is a promise gap or a communication gap so whatever a uh, company company communicated in form of advertisements in form of you know promises done by sales personnel or by the company in many other way and what actually delivered so if it doesn't matches there is a communication gap and this is a gap number 4 then uh, the last one is a gap number 5 right when actual service delivered so how this actual service delivered is being perceived by the customer and what customer actually expected if if there is a if there is a gap if there is a difference in what customer expected and what customer perceived to the actual service it will lead to a service gap this is gap number 5 so why we understand it because we are in the process of designing the service so let us understand where this gap arises and this this is a gap model to understand the service quality so here we are you know uh, to understand because we are on the process of designing the service and the so uh, so we are here to find out the standard gaps what are the reasons of this gap and this is a provider gap where the company's perception of customer expectation doesn't match with the customer driven service design and standards so let us let us understand what are the reason of this gaps so many time poor design poor service design means unsystematic new service service development process vague undefined service design failure to connect service design to a service positioning are are, are a few reasons then absence of customer driven standards what customer are you know expressed in terms of their expectations are if not understood or if understood it is not specified to the design department then this this gaps happens or in inappropriate physical evidence and uh, service space a uh, service gap so many a times the tangibles used in the line with the customer expectation do not match matches with you know uh, these physical evidences are really important may they contribute little less as compared to the other uh, other dimensions but but it plays a very important role in in you know in in understanding the service in assessing the services by a customer so let us move to service de design and development so for a good service idea to succeed it is important to focus on development design and specification of a service because services hum hum baat kar chuke that services are co created right co created means the involvement or participation of both the service provider as well as customer is must so let us understand the service design process first this is a customer side this is a service provider side right so first uh you know a marketer need to understand what is the service concept what is the core service that we need to deliver and what are the supplementary services surrounding or facilitating the, this core service right so they are target customers and there is some some expectation or desired service experience that customer is expecting so once a marketer understand the service concept means what is the core services and what are the supplementary services then they are able to understand like for example i take the same example of a crutch or a day care service the core benefit the parents are looking uh, from the service is safe custody of their child of their of their child right and taking that core service in mind or the surrounded facilitating or enhancing services a service package is prepared so physical items sensual benefits psychological benefits need need need, need to be you know uh a uh, a uh, 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 you know a part of need to be a part of that entire service process then performance specification need to be mentioned by the customer as well as by the service provider so in terms of customer expectation and in terms of customers requirements then design specification what all activities facilities the provider skills the cost and time estimation need to be taken care of now the delivery specification the schedules deliverables and the location that need to be mentioned why so this the this all a whole is the process of service design process because as i mentioned earlier and repeatedly i am saying that services can't be separated these three uh, different processes of service like service production service delivery and service consumption can't be separated at the same time where it is delivered it need to be consumed so let's move to the service innovation in design there are certain challenges of service innovation in design there are certain considerations for uh, you know for service innovation 
there are different types of service innovation that we'll be dealing in the next slide and stages in service innovation in development and the last part that is service blueprinting this is a technique of documenting the whole process of service and this helps us to improve the service uh, you know so this entire service performance as well because we're able to identify the gap areas so begins with the choice of service strategy which determines the nature and focus of the service and the target market so there are two issues that uh, uh, you know the the service designer need to take care of one is the degree of variation in a service requirement how much degree of variation is required because i i said it, it is mentioned earlier that services can't be standardized therefore sure for sure there would be some variation in the services and not from the part of the service provider as well as customer do require because because uh, you know every customer have their individual and their their unique needs then a degree of customer contact and involvement again depends upon the type and nature of service i am offering like if it's case of a medical services if it's case of education services so customer contact and involvement is must in this there may be some services in which customer need not to be present like you know car washing is a service if you want to get your uh, uh, own good process uh, uh, you know uh, uh, processed uh, repaired you need need a customer need not to be involved into that so degree of variation and degree of contact and involvement need to be addressed let us understand the service design definition first a service service you know is a performance is a deed it's something that is done to or for a customer then service delivery system involve the facilities required to uh, you know to 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 deliver service the entire process from uh, you know customer inquiry to finally finally delivery of the services and the skill set needed to provide a service then a uh, product as a whole bundle so a product can be a combination of good or a service or it can be a pure service or it can be a pure good uh, with which some services are attached with this is what a product bundle is that you need to understand so uh, then moving to the the next point that is element of service design there are two major elements one is the structural element and other one is the managerial element so when i'm saying structural element it talks about delivery system this delivery system can be short or long this can be easy or complex facility design means the the physical environment like campus like classrooms if i talk about you know coaching institute or a, or a, a in university right then location again uh, it means the location of a service facility through a google map it should be located for example if customer is looking for uh, you know any nearby restaurant right a mughlai restaurant or a multi cushion restaurant if it is not available on google maps it means you have not located your service on the you know customer requirement for a customer uh, you know accessible the service is not accessible to the customer then um, next important part that is capacity planning we'll be dealing in the next uh, session on this capacity planning here the number of machine or workers multiplied by number of shifts multiplied by utilization and efficiency this is what a capacity because uh, in case of a service we are not supplying there is not supply and demand there is a capacity and demand so capacity is a constraint it is constant as well and that capacity in terms of human resource in terms of technology and machines in terms of physical space and in terms of time that need to be calculated like if, if i talk about uh, a uh, accommodation or a hotel uh, you know if if a customer is looking for a one night stay so if uh, the capacity of a hotel uh, is is in terms of you know the people serving the client or a customer i mean the chef a uh, room boy is required right of uh, somebody as a maintenance um, for a maintenance somebody is required one as a reception area is required and the number of rooms available right so capacity kit ek hotel mein kitna rooms hai kitna staff hai i mean the number of shifts they are working actually hotels work for 24 by 7 hours then uh, next part is managerial elements it's it talks about service encounter service encounter is you know the point the touch points where customer and service provider interacts with each other it could be the website it could be the checkbox it could be face to face interaction or remote interaction it as well 
then quality that depends on customer perception how consumers are perceiving the service outcomes is a quality then another issue as a managerial element uh, while designing a service that is managing capacity and a demand because demand in case of a service is very fluctuating and for different type of services like in case of a medical services in many cases demand is unpredictable like how many accidental cases will be there how many heart attacks will be there in a day so this is something which is unpredictable seasonal demand is there in hospitality there is a fluctuating demand you know uh, by the day uh, different uh, time of the day different uh, days in a week like uh, we talk about you know a hotel or restaurant or pvr cinemas so that demand and capacity is a constraint in terms of human resource in terms of you know uh, the space available the rooms available then the furniture available so that that need to be matched between while we are designing a service we need to understand the nature of demand and the the type of capacity or constraint we have then information which is critical to you know to get a loyal customers so let's 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 talk about planning and creating a service so number one point while we are creating and planning a service is design a service concept right designing a service concept then documenting the delivery sequence over time the number of stages and steps then finally flow charting the service delivery so let's 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 move to the first point that is designing a service concept so the very first requirement for a uh, you know service marketer or the the manager or the designer who are there in a service design process to understand what is a core product and what are the supplementary services so core products often become the commodity right and supplementary services help to differentiate the core product and create a competitive advantage and this supplementary services are further you know divided as facilitating services and enhancing services that add value and appeal to the core product so core product is a central component component that supplies the principal problem solving benefit customer seek a product is a bundle of benefit right so many other benefit customer is you know uh, seeking from a from a service or a product he is paying for but there always a central idea a core product uh, right in case of a service like uh, recently i took an example of a uh, you know mm -mm. day care services or crèche services or, or, or what a uh, working parents are looking for their their small kid right so the core product is the core services safe custody of their kid from 9 to 5 let's say right and other than this this core service there are many other things that is being attached with the uh, you know this this big core service so like ac rooms comfortable bed play area the toys you know uh, many creatures are giving a service or take care services giving a service of homework or you know tuition classes for a kid all those could be the supplementary services so supplementary can be the anything that that augment the core product or facilitate the use and enhance its value and appeal then the last process is the delivery process this delivery process is used to deliver both the core product and each of the supplementary means the facilitating as well as enhancing services so here is an example the core benefit a customer is looking from a you know overnight stay in a hotel is a bed for the night in an elegant private room with a bathroom attached what bathroom clean bathroom other than everything that customer is you know uh, doing and receiving in terms of you know online reservation velvet parking reception baggage service cocktail bar restaurant entertainment sports exercise internet pick up call room service business center but you know easy uh, cashier or a billing everything is a part of supplementary and these supplementary can be for the divided as facilitating and enhancing services so second stage is documenting delivery sequence over time so the 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 designer must address the sequence in which customer will use each core in a supplementary services right the entire process like the customer you know book uh, uh, a room or an accommodation on website over the phone then next stage would be the 
the, the day when customer arrives in a hotel, he parks the car, then he moves to the reception area, a bellboy come, come and, you know, uh, take the luggage, every single stage. And what all are the people with, with whom encounter is happening, that is a service encounter, what are physical evidences are the key, are there like handling a key to a customer is a key is a physical evidence right then determine length of time for each step how much time a customer is taking in parking a car and then you know uh, on a reception area in verification and all that submission of documents when you are taking one night stay in a hotel so this all and then information should be reflect good understanding of a customer especially their needs habits and expectations so this is how we document the entire process and sequence like here is an example you can see these boxes are depicting and showing different uh, you know activities what happens when what happens when and in what sequence when you 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 took a service of overnight stay in a hotel right so this is how customer moves in a parking then use the room use the internet checks in then use the guest room overnight right room service then till the point he checks out then last and the third stage is flow charting the service delivery. This offers a way to understand totality of customer service experience useful for distinguishing between core product itself and service elements that is supplement core. So if I talk about restaurant, food and beverage because the reason why customer is visiting to a restaurant is this. This is a physical product but this is a prepared food right this is a prepared food so this is a core benefit that customer is looking for other than the room decor the the you know the the waiter service the uh, you know the the conducive environment the, the the soothing environment the music everything that is being attached with that can be a supplementary so this shows uh, how nature of customer involvement with service organization varies this we discussed in the last session people processing service possession processing mental stimulus processing information processing so let me let me show you how a chart can be uh, you know uh, used or a chart uh, charting of the sequence can be done so let me move to the another slide but just to show you this is a simple flow chart of a delivery of a people processing service like people processing uh, let's talk about a service stay at a motel right so car parking is one activity how much time does car parking take then checks in spend a night in a room then order for a breakfast or a meal and you know a state i mean in between there could be some some other so some other activities customer is uh, uh, or some other facilities customer is availing like customer may use a pool and a spa in a hotel laundry services or uh, you know a, a wi-fi and the moment he checks out this is the last stage of the after paying uh, you know uh, paying the bill so this is how the entire service process is understood so this is all about in the session thank you very much class and if you have any doubt please uh, drop your doubts in the in, in the you know uh, uh, this uh, chat box or just after the video thank you